the generations keep on rolling. Time is not linear but circular. And so this moral leader of this generation comes to us now 58 years later, one of the co-chairs of the Poor People's Campaign along with the other co-chair. Both of them come now with two impacted people in the Poor People's Campaign, the Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris and the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber II, hear ye them. Hello, Washington, D.C. Hello, these yet to be United States of America. My name is Reverend Dr. Liz Theo Harris, and I am the proud co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. And we are standing here strong from West Virginia to Texas, from Pennsylvania to New York, North Carolina to California. As Reverend Dr. King said, there comes a time when we must sound the alarm. From these very steps, 58 years ago, he implored the nation, we have come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. There is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism, now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. And in a nation, the richest nation in human history, that has 140 million people who are poor, or one health care crisis, one job loss, one health, one storm away from economic ruin, we indeed must sound the alarm. When because of the gutting of the Voting Rights Act, we have fewer voting rights today than 56 years ago, we must not cool off. When climate crisis is wreaking havoc on the lives and livelihoods of people all over this world, when there's a Supreme Court, an unconstitutionally constituted Supreme Court, they can overturn a moratorium on evictions, we must protest. We must rally. We must organize and mobilize and sit in and stand up. Not just for a day, not just for a summer, but until all people are housed, until all people are fed, until all people earn a living wage, when our voting rights are protected and expanded, all debt is canceled, all air and water is clean, all people are free to thrive, not just barely survive. We're living in a time of crisis when the foundations of injustice and racism and poverty are crumbling and a fusion movement of people coming together across all the lines that divide us is breaking through and building power. It's times like these when throughout history, prophets have to arise to sound the alarm, to cry out, somebody is hurting our people. Somebody is evicting our families. Somebody is suppressing our votes. But we won't be silent anymore. I want to introduce two uh, sound alarms that are here with us from Unite here today, sounding the alarm on the injustice that does not have to be as we move forward together, not one step back. Thank you very much for that wonderful speech. Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Namialo, and I'm a waitress at your tail and a member of Unite Here Local 25, 
which stands for respect, rights, and progress. I immigrated from Uganda over 20 years ago, and I have always had to fight my way to make, to make it in this country. Thanks to my union, Unite Here Local 25, I am powerful, workers are powerful, I now can advocate for myself, my workers, and my nine-year-old daughter, so she will have a path to walk on and move forward with. Together, we can create a path, not just for this generation, but for a generation yet born by pushing for a livable wage, fight for 15. We need to push for leaders that respect the rights of all people and workers by voting leaders that are progressive. We will continue to expand and protect workers' rights. Behold the power of a people united. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Josh Armstead. I am the Vice President of Unite Here Local 23 here in DC. I grew up in this city. I know what it means to struggle in the richest nation on earth. That's why I joined the union. That's why I wanted to better myself and my community. Let me tell you guys real quick, voting rights and workers' rights are one and the same. We need to make sure that we have a livable wage 15 and beyond, we need to make sure that workers have the right to have a real future in this country. Voting rights, workers' rights, one and the same together. We need to keep on moving, we need to keep on marching. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, 58 years ago, a preacher from Georgia stood on these steps and declared, in the face of racism and economic justice, a nightmare. A nightmare that was lengthened by congressional and state filibustering. He said that day, I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with his vicious racists, with his governors, lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. He also said on behalf of the people that day, we can't be satisfied and we will not be satisfied. His dream was not an abstract dream, but a concrete hope rooted in a, a demand for jobs and living wages and voting rights. In fact, the march that day was the march for jobs and justice. He wanted his children and all children and another generation to come to know the best that was possible in this nation. Now that was 58 years ago, but still today we can't be satisfied. And we would do well to remember that the legal basis for the very personal source of Dr. King's agony as he stood here that day and first told America about the nightmare, all of that came from state legislatures passing bad laws from the bottom up. The constitutional and moral crisis we face today is the direct result of forces in state legislatures that have organized to push back against the progressive voice and power in this country. It is not just an attack on black people. It is an attack on justice and the progressive voice in this nation. And this, and this attack is allowed because we don't have sufficient federal protections. We still have actors in state legislatures in 49 states, and too many of them are succeeding in suppressing the vote and blocking living wages and blocking police reform and blocking health care and blocking education. And so we are not gathered here just to commemorate. In fact, I would dare say we don't need another commemoration. We need a recommitment. We need a reconsecration. We're not here just for something that happened a long time ago. No, no, we're not here just to have a day. We are here today to continue the work of our foreparents to expand democracy until we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In fact, we cannot reduce 
our movements to single issue protests. And anybody that tries to lead you on a single issue protest is a misleader and not a leader. Our issues are as complicated as our blood system and our nervous system in our bodies. And so we're here today. We've come together from many corners to lay out a vision, demand action, to address the interlocking injustices and the interlocking evils of systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation, the war economy, and the false moral narrative of Christian nationalism. So we declare and we demand that if we pass the For the People's Act and the Voting Rights Restoration Act, we could stop James Crow Esquire and Jean Crow Esquire. Laws that are designed to hurt black people and white people and brown people and native people and poor people and rural people and urban people and the, and the working people and the disabled. We could institute elections that would be fair and full. We could make sure that everybody, every eligible voter can vote. If we pass the For the People's Act, all that they're doing in the states becomes illegal immediately. If we pass the Voting Rights Act restoration, then they have to go through pre-clearance. If we end the filibuster, we could do it all and do it all right now. If we instituted a $15 minimum wage, living wage, we could raise 32 million people out of poverty and low wealth immediately and pump $328 billion into the economy immediately. If we pass a full inhumane economic budget and infrastructure plan, we can end poverty and low wages from the bottom up. If we had put the $6.4 trillion we have poured into endless wars since 9-11, if we had put it into green energy, we could have built a renewable energy across this country and infrastructure with mere trillions of dollars to spare. If we stop housing evictions, we can prevent millions from being thrown out in the street. If we restored the corporate tax rate to what it was before Trump, we could raise $130 billion and provide early child care and education for every child in this country. And we can do it. We can do it. We have to make this nation face its moral crisis. We have to make this nation ask the question, what does it profit America to hold on to a filibuster and get a limited infrastructure bill and lose the soul and the infrastructure of our democracy? What does it profit America to hold on to an infrastructure and not lift 140 million Americans out of poverty and low wealth? And so it's time. It's time for a full moral movement to shift the moral narrative and build power, especially among the 140 million poor and low wealth people that now make up 30 percent of the electorate. This is the time. And it's not about Democrat, and it's not about Republican, it's not about left, it's not about right, right. it's about right versus wrong. Now is the time. And if I could borrow from Martin Luther King, Anybody who tries to criticize these demands and say they are somehow anti-American and wrong, well, if our demands for full justice are wrong, then the Constitution is wrong. If our demands are wrong, then the Bible is wrong when it says in Isaiah 10, woe unto those who legislate evil and rob the poor of their rights. If our demands are wrong, somebody better check Jesus because he said the nation would be judged. When I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison, did you see about me? When I was sick, did you heal me? But the truth is, Liz, our call for voting rights and living wages and police reform and health care and climate are not wrong. They are right. And they really are the only thing worth spending our lives for. If you're still alive in the, in the midst of COVID, then you ought to use every breath you have to change this nation. We made a decision in Afghanistan 20 years ago wrong because too many didn't have the courage to say no. We can't make that mistake now when it comes to saying no to those that want to take our country back. 
And if we don't do this work, I fear for this nation. But we will do it. We have to do it because we refuse to give up on the possibility of America. These demands of justice are non-negotiable and they cannot be watered down. There is no moderate position when it comes to justice. And that's why we come together. We work together. 58 years ago, black women weren't allowed on this stage. But 58 years later, they're leading this stage. 58 years ago, they didn't have Latinos on this stage. But today they are. 58 years ago, there were no white main speakers, but today they are. There were no brothers and sisters from Appalachia and Alabama. There were no LGBTQ folk on the stage openly. There were no native and Asian, but today they are because we must come together. We must build a movement together. We all are being attacked by the same forces, Mark. The same people that are against black folk, are against Latino folk, are against women, are against gay people, are against Asians, are against voting rights, are against health care, are against living wages. And if they are cynical enough to be together, we got to be smart enough to come together. And so I close the day by saying there's power in coming together. During the slavery, it looked like slavery had won. But when Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass got together with some white Quakers, and some white evangelicals like, like William Lord Garrison, they tore slavery down. Women didn't have the right to vote, but when Sojourner Truth, a black woman, got with Lucretia Mott, a white woman, they marched together in the streets of this city and they won the right to vote. It looked like monopolies would have the last word, but at the turn of the 20th century, when multiracial coalition decided it was time to gather, come together, white and black labor people came together and won labor laws. It looked like Jim Crow had beaten down injustice, but then Rosa Parks and Martin King and a gay guy named Bayard Ruster and a black woman named Fannie Lou and another brother named Bob Moses got together with white folk like Glenn Smiley and Jonathan Davis and Viola Lewusa and James Reed and they tore Jim Crow down. In the 19th century, when poor white farmers and formerly enslaved people got together, they built the first Reconstruction, a fusion movement, and won the 14th, 15th Amendments to the Constitution and the Civil Rights Act of 1875. And I must tell you, as I make my way to North Carolina, they told me I might never walk again. But when the prayer warriors got together, and the doctors got together, and my family got together, and, and my faith got together, and my swim coach got together. I can jump now. I can walk now. There's power when we come together. And so y'all, let's come together. And if we come together, God will help us. The Spirit will help us. Tamika, the ancestors will help us. And the whole nation will thank us. And generations yet born will call our name. Let's come together black and white and brown and native and Asian and young and old and gay and straight and Christian and Hindu and Muslim and Jewish and even persons who don't have a religious faith but they believe in the moral arc of the university. Together until the poor are lifted. Together until the workers are paid. Together until the sick are healed. Lord help me here. Together until voting is guaranteed. Together until unmerciful house evictions are stopped. Together, Together. until police killing is stopped. Together. Together, until land and water is not pausing. Together. Together, until war is not pushed and promoted and promulgated. Together, Together. until humanity is respected and children are protected and civil rights and labor rights and human rights are never neglected. Let us be together until these things are actualized. Let us never be satisfied. And if we come together, if we work non violently together to change this nation, we will change it. And there will be something said about our work. When we all got together, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day, what a day. What a day.
of justice it will be when we all get together. What a day! What a day! What a day!